you know, we're all uh, familiar, obviously I am as well, we're all familiar with sketch comedy. You know, there's lots of mediums. I think, you know, Comedy Central does a lot of sketch comedy. Saturday Night Live does a lot of sketches. You know, skits, whatever. Uh, even Doug Walker does it sometimes, doing a little skit in the middle of his reviews. They're always fun to see. Uh, Jackass, I think, also did a lot. Point is, it's always fun to go on YouTube and see a lot of these weird random skits you can make, or, like, interpretations of stuff, or, like, I don't know, it's like, you can just make this little seven-minute short with your friends, and, um, you know, it's fun, you can see it for free. But, uh, somewhere around the early 2010s, a random Hollywood executive decided, let's just compile all those seven-minute sketches that would be funny on their own, but we'll have to turn it into a unfunny film. A film that I heard about as a kid. I was 12 when I heard about it, obviously. And, um, the whole thing is, I heard it, it was not good, but as a kid at the time, because I, I, I was mostly on common sense media, yeah, common sense media. I'm worried it's just a fruit, but actually, it's not a grape. Uh, but I had a seed in it. What is it? Yeah. And it was, it's not deemed, it has often been called one of the worst films of all time, movie 43, where a bunch of talented actors and maybe some filmmakers got together, directed their own short films, and uh, I don't know where to go from here. This film is a very interesting entity, despised by everyone in the world. I don't know if, I don't even think Armand White could, no, who am I kidding? Armand, Wa Armand White is like the reverser of bullshit, so he probably thought this was a masterpiece. He thought this was Citizen Kane or something. One is there are just some movies that are so bad they're good. You know, like The Room. Or Birdemic, I think. But Movie 43 is a horrible, horrible film that honestly deserves to be forgotten over time. It has been on every worst of lists. It is considered one of the worst things ever made. And then let's see Doug Walker sit through this uh, piece of shit. I've only seen clips of it, and I, I, I think there's only one that I thought was funny. I think it was the one with Terrence Howard, but... Uh, yeah, I just really chose never to see this. I only saw a clip of it, and I was like, oh, God, no. Let's watch this. to get me through that horrible thing, which I've never seen. Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy, remember it, so you don't have to. Do you hear the one about the guy who made one of the worst films of all time, yet somehow won Best Picture? Oh, that's right! I forgot. I, I, I know there's like a lot of directors. I forgot Peter Farrelly. To go from that to green, it's like, that's interesting. Gotta be funnier than anything in this. <laughs> Movie 43 is a film I've been asked to review for a while and is gaining a reputation as one of the most puzzling bad comedies ever made. Not for how unfunny it is, though yes, it does succeed spectacularly at that, but rather because how many big names were attached to it. Names like Hugh Jackman, Kate Winslet, Halle Berry, Richard Gere, Emma Stone, Kristen Bell, Gerard Butler, Naomi Watts, and that's just to name a few. Directed by some other big names like Peter Farley, Elizabeth Banks, James Gunn, Brett Ratner, again, just to name a few. You 
should not, not have said Brett Ratner. Few. With a tiny budget of only six million dollars. Yeah, that sounds like a lot, but to give you an idea, Boo a Medea Halloween cost 20 million to make. The surprisingly bigger question than why the hell this movie was made is how the hell this movie was made. Well, almost like an apocalypse now from a parallel universe, the making of this movie is arguably more interesting than the movie itself. Originally, comedy producer Charlie Wessler wanted to make the next Kentucky Fried Movie, a collection of funny shorts that pushed the envelope in terms of good taste. He described it as funny or die, only you could go crazy, because... Or funny or die without the creativity. Here's another sketch comedy show I forgot about, funny or die. I have not seen funny or die in a while. Don Cheadle's Captain Planet was too normal for him. His plan was to have three pairs of comedy directors take one-third of the movie. The Farley Brothers, the Zucker Brothers, and Trey Parker and Matt Stone. Yeah, the Zucker Brothers have not done anything. I know that... I know that after... Uh, I think it was the second Naked Gun movie that... Uh, David Zucker and Jerry Zucker went on different directions. So Jerry Zucker went on to direct three feature films. I think he's essentially taken a step back from directing because the three films he did after the split um, was um, Ghost, obviously, uh, First Night with Sean Connery, and Rat Race. And after that, it's just David Zucker's career. I think Basketball is the last good thing he ever did. And then I, I, I like Basketball. I'm not going to lie. And after that, it was just Scary Movie 3, 4, and 5, and, yeah. I'm pretty sure Parker and Stone dropped out at the last second of like, yeah, we, we, we're not stupid enough to do this. An interesting idea, but over time, all the directors backed out, apart from one of the Farleys, who not only decided to join development as a producer as well, but also happened to be a very charming guy with a lot of famous friends. They first got Hugh Jackman to agree, who loved the idea of doing something different and risque. And after much convincing of her agents, they got Kate Winslet as well. This became the movie's pitching point. We're doing a film with a ton of big names that only takes a few days to shoot, and major stars Hugh Jackman and Kate Winslet already filmed. Well, the pay was certainly low for a lot of these big names, but it was only for a few days, there's already big talent involved, and best of all, they offer to work around their schedules. Which meant the film took over four years to make, with some celebrities even trying to get out of it. Richard Gere said yes to be nice, but said that he wouldn't be available for over a year, production had to move from L.A. to New York, and said they could only have him for four days, not a minute more. Give Wessler and Farley credit, they worked within all the limitations both the actors and directors laid out for them, making this a very bizarre passion project, but still a passion project nonetheless. However, with the strange mix of both a large amount of time and a short amount of time, was there any chance this movie would actually turn out something of value? And when I say value, I mean something anybody would put on their resume in the future? Hold on, I just really gotta stop here. I got this weird ad. Sorry. I forget. YouTube hates me. Alright, I'm back. Well, let's see the fruits of their labor of lackluster love. This is... Movie 43. It opens with one kid throwing a dartboard at another kid, holding a dart in his mouth. I'll admit I laughed at this, but knowing that Johnny Knoxville is in this movie, I somehow feel cheated. I'll admit I laughed at this, but it was with one kid throwing a dartboard at another kid, holding a dart in his mouth. Sorry, it, sh it slows down all the time. I'll admit I laughed at this, but knowing that Johnny Knoxville is in this movie, I somehow feel cheated. Yeah. It's like a rejected stunt from Jackass that Johnny Knoxville, like, is like, Hey, you want to do this? No, that doesn't seem... Yeah, it feels like a rejected Jackass thing. It looks like this is actually a video they uploaded online, and his little brother tricks them into thinking it went viral. Yeah, the only thing going viral in this movie is George Clooney's response when they asked him to be in it. Look it up, he said that. I took the liberty of cloning YouTube and hyperinflating your views. The boys look to get revenge by giving the little brother's computer viruses, so they ask him to help looking for a movie. There's this movie on the internet, we can't... 
find it. I mean, this video is so illegal, it has been banned by every country in the world. It's so banned, even Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube think it's going too far. If you can watch it all the way through, you're rewarded beyond your wildest dreams. No, well, that's kind of how this film works, except the reward for watching is abject emptiness. Though it does last you all your life. Yeah. If you haven't caught on, this is the sketch that loosely links all the others together. Together. You're Rod Serling if the script for an American Pie straight to DVD movie anally assaulted the charm out of him. Have fun with that mental image. Uh... Oh, no. Those movies never. Well, they do know about the latest one that they just made. It's like the fact that there's more straight to DVD movies of American Pie than there are official theatrical releases is pretty baffling. Oh, yeah. So I don't even want to talk about it. Though I will say, Nick and Mylon Beta House were okay. For reasons. The first video they find is a sketch starring Kate Winslet and Hugh Jackman. The routine that launched a thousand. Well, they're in it! But he's probably got one of those awkward character faces. Mr. Character Face is on the cover of Gotham Magazine. That's him? Oh, now that he's done playing Wolverine, he's gonna play Batman now. I'm sorry, my Bruce Wayne sparkle. Speaking of things that should be banned, I don't know how much of this I can show, but... Oh, how do I put it? Hugh Jackman has balls on his neck. That still doesn't sound right, but there's no way to say it so it does sound right. Yeah. A funny idea. Having... Balls for her neck. I mean, let's all be fair. Peter, Peter Griffin's chin is essentially balls. When you ask people, that's literally what people think about when Peter Griffin. Yeah, ball chin you neck. I mean, he had the ball chin from Men in Black too. So, yeah, I just got a bunch of fruit here. I'll admit the reveal at first is so out of nowhere and so matter of fact, it did get a legit laugh out of me. But take a guess how many other jokes they have in this entire sketch. You're right, this one! This is the one That's true. That's the only joke they have. A bald, a bald neck meme. It's like, ugh, that's the only joke. Oh god, they're running this down the ground even further. I'm so surprised they even got Kate Winslet for this. It makes me sad, because I love Kate Winslet. I think she's a great actress. She's really beautiful. I hope she's single. <laughs> Joke they're gonna have the whole time! Christ, did the guy who produced the It's Pat movie produce it? Oh, come on! Oh. Look, a puke falls and he eats it. You're on a life oh. Pat movie producer. Oh, come on! Oh. Look, a puke falls and he eats it. You're on a life-size recreation of the Titanic with Leonardo DiCaprio. Now you're watching The Greatest Showman eat his neckball hair. Life is funny. This movie is death, but life is funny. Look, a baby. This has promise. Come here, little. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Come here. Who's a big boy? Yeah. Who's a big boy? Who's a big boy, huh? Well, if Hugh Jackman's ever a registered sex offender, we now know which picture to use. Wondering what this is all building up to? The balls touch your face. Whoa, <laughs> whoa, And that stops. Yeah, it doesn't even really end, it just stops. I don't know why, but I'm thinking about... I don't know, I'm thinking about the scenes from... I don't know, I guess going off in the distance thinking of Kate Winslet in her most notable work. Uh, the Titanic, uh, There's Holy Smoke. And uh, Little Children, the movie she did with uh, Patrick Wilson. That's a really good movie, though. I'm sorry, I'd rather uh, the ball touching. She would never be disgusted by it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. The thing is, Doug is making this funnier than the actual movie. So, I guess if I saw the actual movie, I'd be like, Oh my kidney, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't know what's good or what's bad anyways. I think because Winslet said if they don't fire three of my agents before they shall cut, I will do to their balls the exact same thing they're currently doing with Jackman's. Nobody could blame her. Pornography with viruses. One of the boys tries putting viruses on the brother's computer from a porn site as they look up the next sketch. 
And yes, I too think there should be a written law that Liv Schreiber and Hugh Jackman should never be in a movie together again. Nothing personally against them, it's just bad things happen. That is so true. To a goddamn point. Guys, X-Men Origins, it sucked, but Lee F. Schreiber was one of the best parts of that movie. He was such a legitimate good casting for Sabretooth, and they, they screw it up. Mm. Also, mm, proof this was made in the early 2010s. Inside, as they look up the next sketch, and yes, I too think there should be a Lee F. Schreiber and Naomi Watts. Um, arguably, this was when they were still a couple. They've since split up. They since ended their relationship. Yeah. But so... Yeah. This is aged well. well I mean, the joke aged well, that uh, current Hollywood couple, yeah, and now they're no longer a couple, so. The jokes just write themselves. Written law that Liv Schreiber and Hugh Jackman should never be in a movie together again. Nothing personally against him, it's just bad things happen. He and Naomi Watts play the parents of a homeschooled child they like to brag about despite them being less than pleasant with him. High school is about more than just classes and homework. There's the alienation, the loneliness. <laughs> You dropped your books, fuck face. Pick your knees up! Again, the idea is okay, as they wow. say they don't want him to miss out on what other kids go through in school, so they bully him and make him feel awkward and do all sorts of terrible things. But again, you know. So they bully him and make him feel awkward and do all sorts of terrible things. Okay, I got a really weird one. What other kids go through in school, so they bully him and make him feel awkward and do all sorts of terrible things. But again, you know this is it. This is the one joke throughout the whole thing. So you get a second of laughter, but a dozen minutes of boredom. There's no spin, uniqueness, or adding on top of the joke. It's just the same stale formula. You're expecting it to end with Steven Seagal telling an uncomfortable audience how great they've been before they cry drive their way home. Look, they even want to act out his first kiss. He doesn't want that. Sweet home Alabama, da, 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 where the skies are so blue. Sweet home Alabama, da, 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 da. Lord, I'm coming home to you. I couldn't resist. Also, this is the most unrealistic way anyone would kiss Naomi Watts. Naomi Watts said, want me to kiss you? I, of course, she'll never say that in real life, because, well, but if she offered, if she wanted to kiss me, like, I, I'd have, yeah, I, I'm, I would be terrible, I would be a terrible kiss for Okay, give that kid an Oscar, because acting like you're not interested in Naomi Watts is hard. If Naomi Watts wants to offer to kiss you, give you your first kiss, be like, no, I, I, that kid really does deserve an Oscar. If it were me, I, I would be like, yeah, I'm sorry, she's too attractive. I just, I, I can't, uh, no, oh, my kidding, I'm gonna get flagged by the YouTube community guidelines. Of... Of course I mean it that way. When they meet him, he seems well-adjusted. Art. Alright, I forgot. There's this whole bullshit with the, uh, automatics that I keep forgetting. Okay, give that kid an Oscar because acting like you're not interested in Naomi Watts is hard. Of course I mean it that way. When they meet him, he seems well-adjusted enough, but enter punchline. Jen, my mom says hi. Yeah, I just saw him make out with his mom. How is this supposed to be the surprising shock ending? 
The next sketch has Chris Pratt getting ready to propose to Anna Faris. Oh, God. Oh. Yeah, once again, a, a film that, that this was made when they were still married, and now they're divorced. This has aged perfectly well. Not really. Uh, I just ruined the actual goddamn joke. And... Oh, God. Yeah, this was probably when Chris Pratt was struggling as an actor. This is way before... Was this before Parks and Rec or was it stirring? I can't remember anymore. I don't know. I just I, I just don't want to know. I just want this to be over with. Well, this isn't uncomfortable. There's something I want to ask you. There's something I'd like to ask you. How about we say it at the same time? Okay. One, One two... two. Will you poop on me? That surprisingly made things less awkward. <sighs> this is the joke, right? It's all gonna be poop related. Look, she has dump on her apron. Look, the frosting is just like poo. Look, they're talking about poo. Look, he gets a Viagra for poo. Oh, I sure hope this ends with a golden shower. Do you remember what I was... Uh, it's like someone decided... Okay, what was the meaning of this? Was this make a... It's like two girls, one cup, except it's seven minutes long. And equally as nauseating. Oh god, I remember seeing a clip of two girls, one cup. I'm like, oh god, no, no, forget it. I'm not seeing this shit anymore. Damn it. Phrasing. Wearing that day. Do you remember what I was wearing? A yellow sundress. Come on, roll over and let me shit on you, please! He uses the word shit instead of poo, insulting her, causing her to run away. Where was she even gonna go? And a car hits him, resulting in POO! I love you. Oh, I love you. I'm just gonna pretend this was funny. Ha ha ha! I couldn't even get three laughs out. I'm not that good an actor. Meanwhile, the younger brother obsesses with finding the entire movie 43. I don't even get it. Do they think they're watching? Younger brother obsesses right. with fine. E equals MC2, FBI slash CIA, shitting out and bumping none. Finding the entire movie 43. I don't even get it. Do they think they're watching it in parts? Do they think they haven't found it and they're just watching random videos? I know it's a nitpick, but there's so little funny, it's the only thing I can focus on! Yeah. The next sketch opens in a grocery store with Kiri and Culkin and Emma Stone. Right. Finally! Together at last! How's your acid reflux? How's your HPV? Can't believe you sucked off that hobo for magic bean. He was a wizard, Neil. Shh. I'll give him credit while it isn't written very funny. Their die-hard commitment to these performances does make it kind of giggle-worthy. I want to be all over your chin. I will say, that is probably the first time I actually laughed at this. I'm considering it. Shit! That made me laugh! Damn it! Damn it! Do you still like fingers in your butthole? You know the answer is yes. I'll see you in church. <laughs> two?! It got two out of me?! It is 100% their performances though, as the sketch actually looks like it might go to new territory with the people in the store offering to take over his shift so he can chase after her. My god, we might actually move on to something else funny in this! But then it just ends. Jesus Christ, the one time you actually had another joke and you stop early! Was it just too much for you? Was having a different joke follow another the equivalent of going through the portal in 2001? My god, pace yourself! Such lack of talent is not yet ready! Look, a naked woman. Yeah, all right, because 12-year-old boys or teenagers are watching this. I feel bad for the guy, for the usher who had to clean the movie theater afterwards. It was like, and he, like, you know, he's just cleaning, and he notices a smell, and he notices something crusty on one of the theater chairs. He's like, yep, that's... You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> a naked woman. That's it! Now we're back to the trash I'm used to! The next sketch has Justin Long as Robin and Jason Sudeikis as Batman ruining his speed date. He's approached by Uma Thurman playing Lois Lane, acting like she wants 
us to get this bit over with as quickly as possible. I thought you were dating Superman. He's been stalking me ever since. Really? I look out my bedroom window, and there he is, just floating there, masturbating. <laughs> hey, don't put that past the DCEU. They might work that in. All right. Batman is... I'm still waiting to see Batman and Wonder Woman get it on. Oh wait, we have to see their relationship build up. Oh wait, we'll never see it. Interrupt. That's the only reason I want to see the Snyderverse restored, so I can see where Batman, where Bruce and Diana's relationship goes. So by calling Superman during their date. I'm uh, sitting with Lois, and uh, she's on a date with my boy Robin. No. Stay away from Lois, or I'll use my heat vision to feed Okay, it doesn't even matter what the rest of this line is, that edit was funny. I'll admit, as unfunny as this movie is, there is still decent timing with actors who do know how to do comedy. They're just not given much to work with, if anything at all. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get underneath the table, hide down there, and feed you lines. I'm gonna do it. Batman, don't. No. Anything that brings the camera closer to is Dick Grayson I'm very against. Kristen Bell walks in as Supergirl as Batman tries to feed him lines. So where are you from? So where are you from? Krypton? Oh! Ask her about her pool gloves! No, seriously, Google that. Weird. I can't believe the size of this thing. It's enormous down here. I did not... It's a huge, bushy catastrophe down here. I'd like to think she was just memorizing love as an open door in her head during this. Hell, maybe Hans turning evil was her idea because it reminded her of how she was betrayed by this movie. You can hear him. Can yeah, you? I can hear him. Hi. Hi. I skipped a day of ADR. Ain't the good place for this. It's the penguin. Excuse me, I'm gonna go do some Batmaning. He goes to stop the penguin, but runs into Wonder Woman, who's angry he didn't call her. You were gonna stick by me no matter what. And then your little bat- Who is- Who is this? I can't forget. Who's the- Oh, of course. And who's angry he didn't call her. You were gonna stick by me no matter what. And then your little bat condom break. Do you know what it's like going to Planned Parenthood by yourself? I haven't a clue why Gal Gadot said no to this. I forget if this is. You know what? It's not worth looking back. Let's skip this. Please, God, get this over with. Parenthood by yourself! I haven't a clue why Gal Gadot said no to this. But the penguin straps a bomb to Supergirl! Is it even worth bringing up why that doesn't make sense? Oh, screw it, just freeze frame that. And Robin! Okay, let me see. Uh... Supergirl! Is it even worth bringing up why that doesn't make sense? Oh, screw it, just freeze frame that. I'm sorry. And Robin tries to save her. <laughs> ah! My non monocle die! Ah! Uh, yeah, that's funny! Damn it! I was hoping I wouldn't get off of one hand how many laughs I actually had! But Batman reveals it's actually the Riddler. Because, yeah, why not? You knew that she was a dude? Old time. Why, why'd you make me kiss her? I guess I woke up this morning with a little case of the fuck arounds. <laughs> Oh, thank God you made it unfunny again. Things were feeling so unbalanced. Yeah. So I guess the dark web videos the boys are searching through have commercials and PSAs, as this one warns you to be kinder to the little children who are secretly inside convenience machines. Physical, verbal, emotional abuse. Can't you see they're doing their best? Remember, machines, they're full of kids. Okay, so... This film's not very funny, but I'd say about 3% of it is getting legit laughs out of me. And I've seen movies that couldn't even muster a percent. Like, if I was to see some of these as short YouTube videos, I probably wouldn't be that insulted. I'd either just forget about it or maybe produce a slight giggle if it actually was funny. It's ironic the producer said he wanted this to be like Funny or Die because a lot of these probably would have been better if the Funny or Die people actually handled them. But no, we need the gripping computer segues that tie all of this together because... That's what I was saying, this would all be fun. I wouldn't mind this if this was just... 
Oh, no, that's my mom. I think it's my mom. Sorry, that was just my phone comp. That was just a phone company. Because it's a movie, right? Totally worth showing on the big screen. No. Do you know where we can find Movie 43? Movie 43. Are you prepared to have a starving rat nibble out your eyeballs? I'd say this film's honest to a fault, but it's more honest to a thankfully considerate. We gotta click this button. Do not click the button. The yeah! Oh no, you started it from the beginning! I really would rather have Ratsy out of my eyeballs! Doug Walker here, letting you know some of the conventions we have coming up. From June 7th to 9th is Indie PopCon in Indianapolis. And you can get a discount on tickets if you just use the promo code AWESOME when purchasing them. From June 21st to the 23rd, we have Planet Funk in Iowa. This is our first time at this one, and it's sure to be a lot of fun. And from July 6th to 7th, it's Salt City Comic Con. At the New York State Fairgrounds in Syracuse, New York. We have... Even more conventions this year, but these are the ones coming up, so go to the sites, get the tickets, drop on by, and say hi. We'd love to see ya. The next sketch opens with that iBabe device that was shown earlier. Ah, so that was a sneak peek of what was to come. I'm sure it went over as well as this sneak peek went over. So the iBabe has a fan in her cooch, and the kids are putting all sorts of body parts inside her, getting them chopped off. At last, quality has returned to this movie. I, babe, is a music player. It also looks and feels exactly like a naked woman. Teenage boys are physically attracted to naked women. Our research doesn't support that, sir. Commentary? Did you anticipate anybody breaching the cooling system? Dave. That was like a joke waking up, looking at his alarm clock, and going, eh, I don't want to be funny today, and going back to sleep. They bring in the new eye babe with a choice of color. Get it? Because black people! And Richard Gere fiddles her gears. Oh, for Christ's sake. <laughs> now I understand. <laughs> Why'd he try everything to get out of this again? Just when you're wondering. Oh. The choice of color. Get it? Because black people! And Richard Gere fiddles her gears. Oh, for Christ's For Christ's sake. <laughs> now I understand. <laughs> Why'd he try everything to get out of this again? Just when you're wondering, where is this all going by? Yep, that's it. We needed a preview of this early on in the film? That's like saying early on in the movie Monster. Get ready for Charlie's Theron's 39th blink. You're welcome! The gangster on the computer is hijacked by other gangsters looking for movie 43. <laughs> What the fuck, man? So you know where movie 43 is? No! The movie that allows you to see into the future. Okay, it's not that funny yet, but it does keep my interest. I do kind of want to know where it's going. Actually, doing some research, I just found out. This link wasn't shown in America. It was an alternative version shown in different parts of the world. Really? Movie 43 needed to be altered so it'd be more accepted in other countries. Okay, there's one alteration that can be made that everybody could agree on. Refunds in the back. I'd leave happy. I'd leave happy. The next sketch shows two kids on their phones who start making out. Yeah. Wait. The next sketch shows two kids. Do not deceive me, that's Chloe Grace Moretz. <laughs> this hurts. This hurts. This hurts me so bad. This hurts me. I have no idea how much it hurts me.
kids on their phones who start making out. Yeah, Nathan. Christopher Mintz Blas. Yeah, it's even worse. They drag Christopher Mintz Blas into this. On a date for once. I'm almost set for life. From Super Bad and How to Train Your Dragon. I'm just working off a ticket I got for littering. The and kick ass. The girl gets her period, but the boy confuses her blood for fruit punch. Holy shit, you are covered in blood! Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god. Why do I feel like my judging of this movie is gonna be based before and after viewing this sketch? Alright, Patrick Warburton, you're like the bacon of comedy. Put you in something, it's instantly better. Please save us! The lining of Amanda's internal organs just spilling out of her. I got frozen peas in a sponge! The man has to insert his uh, erect f And they raped the Patrick Warburton. I love Patrick Warburton, but no, why? Balance into her vagina. Wow! It's like the sketch was digging its own grave, and rather than Warburton come in to revive it, he's like, Let me get you a bigger shovel! Oh, hey baby, you ready? Oh. What the hell kind of sick family squashes a large tomato in my daughter's pants? What did he have directed this? I'm sending shit to their house! Elizabeth Banks? I made a vow never to shit mail anyone from Wet Hot American Summer. You got lucky. Well, she did do Pitch Perfect 2. Charlie's Angels, but... Then she does, she, she did do Wet Hot American Summer. He's lucky. The girl admits she's getting a period and her father takes her home. You don't have a camping tarp I can borrow, do you? I should be more surprised if something like that wasn't said. The son pulls Warburton's finger, he farts, and they watch the game right after a Tampax commercial where a woman gets eaten by a shark. In a strange way, that should be funny, but Movie 43 is kind of like antimatter. It shouldn't exist, but somehow it does. The next sketch has Johnny Knoxville and Sean William Scott as roommates who are moving out because one slept with the other's girlfriend. But who cares, because he captured a leprechaun for his birthday, played by Gerard Butler. Because of course. The last thing you'll ever see is my cock. Start fucking you! <laughs> Give us the fucking go! <laughs> Do you want the lights on or off when I fuck you with a pair of rusty scissors? Okay, even as a leprechaun with a high-pitched voice, Gerard Butler is still kinda badass. Just keep away from a phantom mask and we're good. It's my crusty Irish cake! Ish. By the way, Brett Ratner directed this one. I have no reason to mention that. I just want you to hate it as much as possible. The phone rings and it's another leprechaun, saying he'll bring them the gold. It appears to them at the front door, and he drags it down to the basement. The sketch might redeem itself if there's a Warwick Davis cameo coming up. Stop in the morning, mate. You got all these assholes and no Warwick Davis? He Stop in the morning, mate. You got all these assholes and no Warwick Davis? He said yes to five Leprechaun sequels. Do you really think he'd say no to Movie 43? Well, get him anyway! The other leprechaun, also played by Butler, attacks them but gets shot by Knoxville. They throw them out with the trash, which I'll admit is a little funny. And Knoxville reveals the final part of his gift, a fairy upstairs. What the hell am I supposed to do with a fairy? No. I said cock- Dr. Barrymore... I am this close to- No, I can't say it. For gold coins. This was a Ratner film, all right. Yep. The next sketch has Halle Berry fulfilling a bet she made when she was drunk that she couldn't do something worse than Catwoman. I've been on so many. Interesting fact now that I remember. Stephen Merchant. Even worse, Stephen Merchant is again another very talented actor and comedian. Is dragged into this. He only said he would do this if Halle Berry was in it, just because Halle Berry was in it. Worth it. Uh, I very still looks good, right? Many blind dates in the past year, and they all are the same. Okay, where are you from? What does your sister do? Why does my outfit look like Miss Piggy melted onto it? Let's play a game. Okay. Have you played Truth or Dare? They start playing Truth or Dare, and honestly, it almost sounds like a normal conversation. Uh, for this movie. I dare you to go and pinch his ass. To her credit, she's dared much weirder things. Things like she once dared a guy to put her in a John Wick movie, and nobody knows why she was there. You don't even have to be here. I she was awesome in John Wick 3. She was really badass. 
true, I would have wanted to see more, but yeah. Also, John Wick Chapter Man, Halle Berry. After seeing her in that, I'm like, how does she not age? I can go home and watch Family Guy right now if you don't want to play. Sundays on Fox. Check your local listings. He goes to grab a guy's ass and he punches him. So he dares her to blow out a blind kid's birthday candles. At least it's creatively mean-spirited. You can guess where it goes from here. They keep making more and more crazy dares, including getting a dick tattooed on his face and her making guacamole with her breast. Jesus, this movie's gonna be one big censor bar by the time it's done. And the sad thing is, most people would prefer that. <laughs> Me too, the censor bar. The censor bars make this... <laughs> <laughs> More funnier than the actual movie itself. <laughs> oh God, just put me out of my misery. The dares finally end with them getting plastic surgery, so she looks like Howard the Duck, and he looks like Austin Michael Jackson Powers. I'm just not that attracted to Asian men. Uh, it's like- It's like they took Mickey Rooney from Breakfast at Tiffany's and said, let's do an even worse version, even more- Also, no, 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 no. Halle Berry does not need plastic surgery. She looks just- she- no, why? Uh, look, look, no, Stephen Merchant, why? Why, Stephen Merchant? Uh, man, uh, it, it hurts me to see that Stephen Merchant said yes to this. Oh, God. Powers. I'm just not that attracted to Asian men. It's like if all the latex from the Monty Python movies bunked all the latex from the Eddie Murphy movies. The boys finally find movie 43, and like I said before, I definitely couldn't predict this. Sending this message back in time. You see, when you idiots made me search for movie 43, we triggered the top secret Cold War initiative to control the mind of every American citizen. This one's growing on me a bit. I need to be out slaughtering. No, you're carrying my seed. You must stay here where it's safe, or I can protect you. <laughs> Come here, Mama. Alright, it's settled. The whole film should have been this. The pointless segue with no celebrities that are usually an afterthought in anthology movies is honestly the funniest and most creative part of the flick. If they simply stuck with this, it could have been a Terminator meets Hot Tub Time Machine. I'm kind of pissed we didn't get an entire movie around this. <laughs> the world starts to explode, and the little brother is the only one who can stop it with his computer, but you guessed it, the computer has viruses. So the Earth gets nuked, leaving the kids to survive in the apocalypse. <laughs> I like this sketch. This is a funny sketch. Years <laughs> Later, one of them finds the laptop asking if he wants to turn back the world to the way it was. The boy says yes, and the computer reports that it's impossible and he should just instead watch a movie. <laughs> that was oh, that is too. This movie predicted the coronavirus. There's no way for the world to get back to normal. Why don't you just watch a movie? Yes. It's also entertaining. Wait, no, that was actually entertaining. No! Kenny Jackson, Coach D. Ellis and Hyde. Oh. The so the next sketch team ever is about the first black basketball team going against an all-white basketball team with Terrence Howard as the coach. Let me guess. The one joke is you're black, they're white, and this isn't hockey. You're black, they're white, this Get ain't that. hockey. Hey, guys. Hello. Who's that woman? Wait. Did I skip to the ending? There was really nothing else after that? But wait, there's 17 minutes left. What was even the final joke? The whites get one point and they win? Racism, ha! That's really the last joke of the movie? But uh, hold on, there can't be 17 minutes of credits. That makes no sense. Even if it has bloopers or deleted scenes, that's still 17 minutes. In fact, wait, where's the James Gunn one? 
Oh, they're showing it now? In the credits? K? This is Beazle. Beazle is about a guy who owns a cartoon cat that looks like Ren and Stimpy is being choked by Homer Simpson's ass. I just don't think he likes me very much. Oh, come on, Amy. He loves you. Really? Fear not, I'll get revenge by directing my own shitty sketch. Beazel makes threats to Banks' character and starts jerking off to pictures of his master. This is definitely old school Twitter James Gunn directing this. Oh, that, that is true. Oh, God, that is... This is not Guardian... This is pre-Guardians of the Galaxy, pre-Suicide Squad James Gunn, so... <laughs> Oof. Although, I want to see what Elizabeth Banks... Elizabeth Banks... Looking... Working off! Ugh. Thank God I never saw this movie. Off to pictures of his master. This is definitely old school Twitter James Gunn directing this. He pisses on her because pee pee! <laughs> and she... He threatens to leave the guy unless he puts her first. Also, I don't think that's pee, that's just... He does exactly that, but Beazle gets his revenge by running over her and shooting her. She survives that fine and beats him at a kid's birthday party, resulting in the kid stabbing her to death with cake forks. Give it a point for random originality, but are we finally done? You sure? Okay, well, if you can't even do your closing credits that smoothly, that's kind of a sign you're watching a shitty movie. Movie 43 is stupid, unfocused, lazily grotesque, and most of the time not funny. Which easily makes it one of the WORST MOVIES EVER MADE! Or just stupid, unfocused, lazily grotesque, and most of the time not funny. I'll be honest, I've seen comedies far worse than this. I at least chuckled a couple times, and even found the computer segues pretty clever in how they built on top of every joke. So why is it called, as Richard Roper put it, the Citizen Kane of awful? Well, I think a lot of that has to do with how many big stars are in it, how incredibly wasted they are, and that they're united not in a smart comedy, but in a desperate shock value comedy. Had the film been cast with a bunch of nobodies, people would probably forget it even existed. But it wasn't. It had a lot of big names who I guess were just looking for vindication that no matter how bad a film they would make later is, at least it wasn't movie 43. It's pretty lame, and most of the time it doesn't work, but is it the worst comedy ever made? I don't think so. I just think it's a bad movie. But don't get me wrong. Bad is still bad enough. I'm a nostalgia critic guy, remember it? So you don't have to. I'll see you in church. Yeah, I will admit, out of all the skits, the only one I really found closest to being funny just a Twitter notification. was the one with Kieran Culkin and Emma Stone. But, uh, that, this feels like torture. Uh, and I know what, no, this is, this is kind of like, this movie feels more like someone. Okay, say if his favorite movie was Freddy Got Fingered, the most desperate attempt at shock value that wasn't even remotely funny. Oh, the, the, the game, okay. I can't believe I'm doing this. I remember hearing about the studio not screaming, screening this in advance for critics. And once the reviews popped up, it shows. About an 18% on Rotten Tomatoes. On, on Metacritic, 4% on Rotten Tomatoes, and... And... I'm going to look the audience score for this. It's 24% audience. So maybe the world hasn't totally gone to shit. Oh, yeah, here it is. The Citizen Kane of Awful. Alright. 
I'm gonna look up every director who did this uh, sketch sketches here. Uh, Stephen Br. I know, I knew that name. Okay. Yeah. So he directed the thread segment, probably the computer segments. Look at all the stuff he's directed. All right, look. Okay, don't get me wrong. Okay, heavyweights, I can understand. Heavyweights, I will defend. But look at this: Little Nicky, Mr. Deeds, Bad of Battle. Eh, depends on who you ask. Little Big Taylor, a waste of Owen Wilson's talent. <clears throat> Walk of Shame, The Dover, <clears throat> and Sandy Wexler. And he was involved in the controversy with um, uh, the the fanboys re-edit because uh, Harvey Weinstein wanted to edit that movie, make it more different, and he just hired Stephen Brill, and Peter Farrelly, Steve Carr. Who is that director? Who do I know? Him? Do I know him from? What films has he directed? All right, I'm looking at this. Next Friday, I actually liked it. Doctor Doolittle two, Daddy Jake's here. Read down or we bury it. Paul, okay, Paul Blart Mall Cop. I will defend. And from what I hear, middle school the worst years of my life was meh. Oh man. Yeah, here it is. Film was pushed back. The film was originally going to be released on our film was pushed back to January because panel filming was giving was given more funding to shoot additional scenes. The film was pushed back because the reshoots could not take place before November. It was again pushed back. The reshoots were done by Kristen Br by Stephen Brill and not the original director Kyle Newman. Enoch Cool News confirmed the story and confirmed the two different versions of the film. What and without the cancer subplot. We're screening a different test audiences in Burbank, California in January 2008 to see which one will rate higher. Newman stated the film would hopefully come out. Upon hearing the changes being made in the film, an internet campaign was begun to protest the plot changes and demand that the original version with the cancer storyline be released in theaters. Look at this. Look at what this son of a bitch wrote. The Stephen Brill. Retaliated in a derogatory manner, calling fans losers in online correspondence. Ended up released to the public in one exchange. Brill called the Star Wars fan dumb and threatened to hunt him down in a profanity laden emailed response. Two letter of complaint. In an interview, Newman, Kyle Newman chastised Brill's behavior, saying, "If you're going, if you're going to go in and read someone's film, even though you're not a fan of the subject matter, just because you want a paycheck, you're not passionate about it, then do that. But don't go opening your mouth, alienating the core audience of that movie." I just thought that was the most low-class thing that you could do, especially considering there are so many people that worked years and years and years on this. <laughs> mm. The fact that, like, I think fanboys is actually pretty damn good, depending on who you ask. Uh, you know, depends on who you ask, uh, but I thought it was pretty fine. But the fact that Harvey Weinstein went through such great lengths to try and ruin it. It's just... Oh. Alright, who is this director? Griffin Dunn. Okay. Elizabeth Banks, Brett Ratner, James Gunn. No. No! No, this kid! Bob Odenkirk directed a segment! Bob, no! No, Bob! God damn it, why? Oh, then I have to click all of this. Oh. This is pain. Thomas Griffin Dunn. 
Oh, oh, and I remember. He was, uh, oh, previously married to Carrie Lowell. Uh, Carrie Lowell, who was, um, Pam, uh, Pam Bouvier in License to Kill, my favorite of all the Bond girls, and the most attractive one, in my opinion. Duke of Duke of Groove. Frac oh, the director of Fractal Magic. Okay, I, I I'm um. This is this is horrifying to me. This is this is painful. Damn it. Alvin goes to dinner. Let's go to prison, the brother Solomon. I remember that movie, weirdly enough, for some reason. Oh, he went uncredited for the movie. Still better than... Uh... Rusty Cundy. You know what, I'm not interested in looking back, so... I'm gonna take my lap. My apologies. Oh. I am so fat. I am so... Look at my fat body. I don't see any proof. I can't find proof of... Anything. I am legit feeling brain dead here. Okay, I gotta look at all the actors who unfortunately sold their damn souls to this film. Alright, The Pitch. Produced and directed... By Peter Farrelly. Charlie Wessler, a mad screenwriter. Oh, I didn't... Uh, they didn't show that one, but... Um, so, it looks like they didn't show all the sketches, but there is a lot. One of them is called The Pitch. Um... And it included... Dennis Quaid, Gretchen Muir, Common, Charlie Saxon, Will Sasso, and Seth MacFarlane. How? I do not know. Probably alternative versions. So, it looks like the American movie, the one that's shown in the United States, is called The Pitch. And the alternative version is The Thread. With, um... With the, the brother storyline. So that's why there's like, uh, that's why it probably does review the alternative cut compared to that one, but you know, better not to, yeah, and then it was reshot, yeah. Fisher Stevens, alright. The Catch. Alright, Hugh Jackman, Kate Winslet, obviously. Homeschooled. Alright, Leah Schreiber, Naomi Watts. Opposition. Coprophilia. The corporophiliac. 
I did not, uh, the fact that that's an actual fetish is like, uh, yeah. JP Smooth? Oh, this hurts me. This, that, okay, the one sketch called Veronica. The only one that was closest to funny, in my opinion. Because Kieran Culkin and Emma Stone know it's shitty, yet it, they're taking it so seriously that it's funny. And when it's, it's like, okay, that's a funny one, and then boom, it ends. It's no longer funny. The Eye Babe one. Oh, God. Okay, Richard Gere, Kate Bosworth, uh, oh, Jack McGrayer, god, no. I'm reading all this, uh, okay, I gotta look how long I've been recording this, a, f a, a whole hour into this. I am amazed at how horrible this is. Superhero speed dating. Alright, I'm what- I knew that actress was familiar. I knew it. Oh, I just couldn't lay my finger. I knew. I knew who she was. I just didn't know. Lo and behold, it's Les Leslie Bibb. Why, Leslie? For, for those who don't know, I'll, I'll list a few of the er, filmography. She actually, um, she's been in a long-term relationship with uh, Sam Rockwell, actually. All right. <laughs> Uh, the Skulls, uh, Talladega Nights, uh, The Ballad of Ricky Bobby. She was in the first two Iron Man films as the reporter, uh, who tro who does a story, who did quite the story spread on Tony. I give you that. Trick or Treat, Confessions of a Sophaholic. Um. Why? Why did Leslie Bibb say yes to this? I love Leslie Bibb. I think she's a pretty good actress on her own. Why? Oh, God. Okay, I'm looking at this. Bobby Cannavale as Superman. God, you son of a bitch. Then there's Middle School Day. Brett Ratner. Oh, thank God. Thank God it wasn't. I thought it, it looked like... I, I, I For the Brett Ratner one, I thought that it was Drew Barrymore, but thank God it wasn't. I'm pretty sure they offered it to her, and she was like, no, no, screw you. Here's the actress. Um, S.T. Ginsburg, an Israeli model, actress, and television host. What has she done? All right, career. Okay, I can't find anything, but, um, I feel bad that you said yes to this. I feel bad for the, her sending this. Of course, uh, she's like, I want to be in movies. Yeah. Truth or... Saeed Madreya. I remember this guy. He was, uh, he was one of, uh... Gunman for the Ten Rings, and he was also in, um, you don't mess with, in, uh, from, he was also in Zohan, yeah, as, uh, one of the, the cab drivers, that wasn't Rob Schneider. Terrence Howard, okay, Diesel, uh, Find Our Daughter, in the segment that was cut from the film, oh, thank God, thank God Almighty it was cut from the film, ultimately, uh, and it had Julian Moore and Tony Shalhoub. And another segment that was cut from the film was called The Apprentice, and it had Anton Yelchin. Who was the producer? Because I want to read who this produ one of the producers on this. Charles, Charlie B. Wessler. Ryan Kavanagh. Started off as a production assistant for George Lucas on The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. Also spent time working at the Lad Company for Alan Ladd Jr. and at Zotope Studios for Francis Ford Coppola. He soon, yeah. 
It's true. Oh, God. He did produce It's Pat, one of the worst movies ever made. Okay, look, at this is one of the worst films ever made. It's Pat. Who was in this movie? Sweeney, the most annoying character on SNL. I think, if I'm not mistaken, it has the rare zero percent on Rotten Tomato. I remember hearing about uh production. Uh, Quentin Tarantino revealed that he was a son of a bitch. It's like everything I read, it just gets even worse. Sex symbol of the... Uh, please tell me this movie was PG-13, because if kids were forced to see this as a punishment... I don't want to know. I don't care to know. I don't want to know about the movie It's Pat. Uh, what was what was the producer of this movie? Alright, I'm looking at it. Uh... Okay, just to show you all the films he's produced, uh, you know, I now point out to you Chuck and Larry. Uh, Relativity Media, which, okay, they produced a few good films, like Tokyo Drift, uh, Talladega Nights, Gridiron Gang, uh, 310 Yuma Remake, Kingdom, Charlie Wilson's War, um, let's see, The uh, Duplicity, Pelham 123 remake, uh, one of the better remakes in mem recent memory. Uh, Zombieland. Did you hear about the Morgans? Uh, but yeah. Limitless. Don John. Yeah, that was a good movie. Why Why would you produce this piece of shit? Why would you produce a piece of shit like that? But thank God it was followed up with Don John. Don John. It's an amazing film. I, I recommend it. I cannot recommend it enough. That movie's kind of dark for me to admit. Produced a lot of good movies, but also has this under his resume, and I just can't anymore. I can't go any further. I can't go any further on anything. I'm just... I should just end this. I should just put myself out of my own misery. And end the video here. So, I'll leave a link to the original down below if I care to. A link to Channel Awesome. And a link to my Instagram. I swear to God, if I ever find a copy of this movie, if I find, I want to go to every Dollar Tree that sells this movie. I will grab it, and I will take it in the middle of the woods. I will put kerosene all over every Blu-ray and DVD copy of this. I will burn it to ashes. I want to burn this movie to ashes. Good night, everybody. Hit the bad angle. I don't care. Everything about this movie is a bad angle.